should go against what has been prescribed if you have been given a diagnosis and a prognosis of a problem. Have you ever heard someone just say, well, I don't feel that there's no cure for this. I might as well just live my best life. But you never gave the opportunity for a remedy to work if you would just take the moment to trust and apply. We're almost at the end of this. I want to share with you that faith in the remedy is this. With familiarizing yourself with what can help you and bring you to a place of peace in your life is important to embrace trust and obtain faith. You have to accept the fact that you have no other choice but only to trust the remedy. There's an old song for many of you that may understand this particular song. says, trust and obey. Amen. But there is no other way but to be happy in Jesus. For we ought to trust and obey. Amen. So having faith in the remedy then leads us to having freedom and healing with the remedy. Proverbs chapter 17 verse 22 says, a healing heart is good medicine. Understand that the word healing is speaking present tense because it is a continuation and it's a continual process concerning your issue. It may not happen overnight, ladies and gentlemen, but there is a process. That's why it says a healing heart is of, of good medicine. It's good medicine, but a crushed spirit, a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Galatians chapter 5 verse 13 was said on this wise to support freedom by saying for you were called to freedom as Apostle Paul places it. Brothers and sisters only do not use freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single commandment. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. I believe I have about five minutes, maybe three, possibly even one minute and 30 seconds. <laughs> Revelation, as we cut across the field to give you the contextualization of Revelation chapter 3, we find that given the meaning of salvation, you would take the word sal. Sal is literally an antidote remedy or ointment that is given to bring healing to the surface of scars or where the hurt or pain or the issue is. But taking it further to derive the word salvation gives us through the Merriam-Webster's dictionary the meaning of as it states in the second meaning, as a noun, a remedial or soothing influence. This is very powerful. A remedial or soothing influence or agency. In other words, it is an adhesive substance for application over your problem. What can we say about salvation as it pertains to the meaning of Medicinally dealing with salve. Salvation involves the redemption of the whole man and is offered freely to all who accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. It doesn't stop there, but in its broadest sense, salvation is inclusive, and I need you to hear this of regeneration. Justification, sanctification, and here it is lastly, glorification. I want to leave you with you 
uh, these steps. Uh, what are the four points of salvation? I'm glad you asked. I would like to share with you based on the aspects of salvation in four particular components. Redemption, justification, sanctification, and forgiveness. To understand what God's salvation is, we must first gain insight to why we need it. Are you hearing me? So we see that in Revelation chapter 3, based on this particular backdrop, what's happening is Jesus offers a salve. That could cure the spiritual blindness of the church of Laodicea. Church of Laodicea is dealing with a diagnosis. It is called blindness. What Jesus says in his word, he offers what's considered an eye salve. He finds that as he offers this, he speaks toward the analogy of hot and cold. Ladies and gentlemen, he's speaking toward the fact that there is no middle ground between yes and no. Although we would consider to rest that maybe, or I'll consider it, does not mean that you will accept to apply what will help and heal you. It is more of a front to say, no longer shall I have this conversation with you because now although it's given unto me to make the decision, I'll consider it. I believe that this would allow the conversation to end because I'm not going to allow you at this juncture to force me to take something that I'm not ready for. To force me into accepting something new and different that will cause my comfortability to be uncomfortable. To, to cause me, ladies and gentlemen, to be in a precarious position that I have to really make a choice because my tomorrow may not look like my today. I feel God here. My, my tomorrow may be so different in the mere fact that if I don't accept what is true to assist and true to help me, I don't know what tomorrow might look like, but I know it will look different if I don't say yes. So as it is, look, this is so it is spiritual. Jesus now is offering a sound. He is telling, amen, the church of Laodicea and the Laodiceans, please, I urge you, I urge you to take this prescription. Mm. Take this, what I consider a help and a healing for where you are. What's happening is, he even goes further to say that, let me give you, in other words, what shall replace what you desire to want from the world. Mm. <laughs> because the world will offer you something that will have you to be excited just for a moment. But not everlasting to the point that your thirst will never be quenched. I feel help here that your thirst will be quenched when you can come in contact with the God that's everlasting. That when you taste of his water, which is his word, that you will never have to thirst again. Uh, could you just tell somebody next to you, the three people around you, and tell them neighbor, utilize the remedy. Please, I urge you the remedy that you have. It's not only for you to keep on display, but the remedy that you have is a remedy that you shall not allow to expire, but the remedy that you possess is a remedy that has been given to you to apply to your problem and never to wait for the disaster to happen. Because the outcome tells me that if I wait too long, that the issue will become worse. Jesus now is awakening the church of Laodicea. He's telling the Laodiceans, I urge you, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, that the only thing that you 
you should do is have faith in the process of a prescription that I know works. I feel like God is talking to somebody today that this prescription that's being prescribed to you, which is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is one that will clean you up, that will restore you, that will stabilize your mind, that will bring your heart to a place of peace. Know that even in your own thinking will not surpass the infinite thinking of Jesus the Christ and how life would happen on tomorrow. Even though tomorrow may not be promised to either one of us, but today I stand assured that if I say yes to the antidote, if I say yes to the remedy, if I say yes to the resolution, that my problem eventually will stop. My issue will have to answer to my solution. Oh, God, help me, help me. Could you just grab somebody by the hand and tell them, you have a solution. You have a solution. Don't lose it. Don't drop it, but use it. Come on, tell them. Use your solution. That utilization of your remedy, I promise you, is not really just for you. But I promise you that if someone else has the issue that you have, that there's enough I may not even be here today. 